Hello, again, and welcome back to the Shadow Gallery. I'm James Donnelly. And tonight's edition is going to be about the film Black Swan, which I was just lucky enough to see. And there's a certain benefit to being able to do this almost instantly after seeing it because, Jesus Christ, um, I... It's been years since I've seen uh, a film that uh, <laughs> and this is part of the problem, of course, with uh, trying to get all your thoughts out in, in just a short period of time. Uh, we're probably going to a two-parter, I'll, I'll give you that right now. Um, it's uh, it really is a hallucinatory nightmare. I mean, it's it, it harkens back to Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream, um, which is obviously a terrifically bizarre and uh, very uh, difficult-to-watch film. Um but, I mean, that deals more with uh, the realm of, uh, obviously, uh, drug abuse, where this is uh, a much more uh, uh, psychotic thriller. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it, you know, the, all, the, uh, all the commercials that you've seen, they say, you know, it's a, psycho, a psychosexual thriller and everything like that. And, you know, that is certainly part of it. I mean, this is as close to as, like, uh, you know, I would imagine, um, you know, this, this kind of feels like uh, this kind of, it's like if if Hitchcock and uh, Luis Buñuel had this uh, bastard love child, this would be the result of it. Um, or even, uh, you know, Polanski, it, it, it really, it, it kind of puts Aronofsky's name into uh, that kind of category now. Um, it, I mean, I'm just totally blown away. I mean, first of all, so going away from Aronofsky for a second, uh, Natalie Portman, Jesus, God in heaven, is she un- fucking believable in this movie. I mean, unbelievable in the sense that she is remark. I mean, she's she's uncanny. I mean, I haven't seen... Uh, I mean, I think since we all first saw her back in Leon, or The Professional, whichever you choose to call it, I prefer to call it Leon, uh, because the international cut of that film is much better than the, uh, than the American cut, which is pretty damn good, but I mean, the international cut just... Is kills. I mean, when we first saw Natalie Portman back then, I mean, I knew that she was going to be, you know, one of the greats. And this, you know, not, uh, the other kind of favorite film of mine, favorite performance of mine that she's done was in uh, Closer, which she was also really phenomenal in. That film really belonged to uh, Clive Owen um, and Natalie Portman, if you will. But definitely, that was Clive, that was Clive's movie, um, because Clive Owen's a fucking god. Uh, anyway, and I just wish that he'd actually start making some really good film choices again uh, soon, real soon, uh, because he's been in too many of my favorite films of uh, the last decade uh, to you know to you know completely cut himself off from being on a roll. Anyway. Uh, everybody else is very, very, very secondary to her. Um, you know, Mila Kunis, uh, uh, Vincent Cassell, Barbara Hershey, uh, Winona Ryder, who is almost like a blink and you miss it uh, role. Um, I, I do miss Winona though. I wish they, you know, they would have given something her, uh, given something, giving her a, something a little meatier. Uh, in this film, I mean, which is not to say that the role that she plays for, you know, the uh, five odd minutes of screen time that she's in it uh, isn't 
meaty. You know, definitely something to sink our teeth into. But I just would have liked to see more, I guess. Um, but that's more of a personal preference for me, I guess. But uh, it's very appropriate the kind of role that she plays. You know, somebody whose star has certainly faded pretty much into you know obscurity, um, and that's essentially what has become of her now. Um, Mila Kunis uh, does exactly what's expected of her. Um, she's She plays the role as, um, you know, all, all sorts of possibilities. Um, you know, she's obviously the dark to Natalie's light, um, you know, the sexual to, uh, you know, Natalie's virginal. Um, Barbara Hershey is is awesome as the mother, and I, it's been a while since I've been able to see Barbara Hershey in something this, uh, in this in something this good. Uh, be frank, um, I think the last time I, I think I saw her in anything substantial that that I really enjoyed was the Last Temptation of Christ. But anywho. Um, I'm just, I'm totally blown away right now. I didn't, in about the, during the first act, I didn't really think I was going to be. I'm like, okay, I mean, I get it. You know, there's a lot of mirrors and there's, you know, obviously she's, you know, this, you know, her mother has kind of formed her into this, uh, you know, th this little like child's world. Um, and then she obviously starts to get into the more, uh, kind of overtly sexual themes in the second act, and then the third act, which is basically the performance of Swan Lake, uh, is just, it's, it's riven. I mean, you cannot take your eyes off of it for a second because you don't know where she's going to go. I mean, most of the time you don't know what's going on anyway. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it literally plays as it is a nightmare. Um, you know, there's, there's foreshadowing of it in the beginning. Uh, that the film, in and of itself, you know, because Nina, the character of Nina, uh, has a nightmare um, that's not terribly dissimilar than what it actually takes place in the film. Um, but, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, the race of perfection, the obsession, um, uh, Aronofsky does some really uh, interesting, really cool visual effects. There's obviously some nice uh, kind of, uh, you know, gags as far as, uh, you know, like pulling the black feather out of her back and everything like that. And, you know, the uh, the red contacts or however they did it. If they did a CG, I don't, I don't know. But, um, I mean, there's some really, you know, like I said, I mean, it's a hyper you know, hallucinatory nightmare. That's really the best that I can say, and it's so fucking good. And what really surprised me, and I didn't know this, um, and it doesn't matter now because uh, I just, uh, I saw the name John McLaughlin uh, as a writing credit, and I was thinking, I was thinking of John McNaughton, who I haven't seen anything from uh, in years. Uh, since Wild Things, which is a film that I really like. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's, I was going to briefly comment on that, but now I realize that that's not the same person. Uh, but wow, I mean, just absolutely breathtaking and definitely one of the best films this year. Uh, it's, it's hard to compare to a film, to Aronofsky's previous film, The Wrestler, which is really more of a character study um, and a really great film. I mean, that was that was really great, too. So, I mean, Aronofsky's got a pretty impressive resume. I mean, I'm not too huge of a fan of uh, Requiem or, uh, um, you know, Pie I liked. Uh, I thought, you know, it's a little too out there. Great score, though. Really, you know, great musical score. Um, the fountain I never saw, so I couldn't tell you, but, uh, you know, hopefully he gets back on RoboCop, uh, cause he still wants to do it apparently. Um, but anyway, so Black Swan, go see it. Awesome. Taking off now. See you back at the Shadow Gallery.